Hi everybody, one and all, and a special hello to Jim, who is celebrating his big birthday today with us. So happy birthday, Jim. I hope you have a lovely day and I hope it cheers up a bit from having to watch me. <laughs> um, but yeah, happy birthday, Jim. So today, it's a bit of a departure. We're still on the mini album theme and, you know, I still have Edith and um, the Mariposa one still going on. And actually, I've been doing another one through the week, um, but that's just an aside. But today we're starting a new different one. So we'll have three on the go. We'll have the Edith one, the Mariposa one and this one, which is, as, as of yet, a secret. <laughs> um, but what we'll be doing today is preparing some papers to complement the pa the papers that come in the in the pack, you know, because it's a Stamperia pack and you get 10 sheets of paper. And they're double-sided, but, you know, at the end of the day, you've got 10 sheets of paper to play with. Um, and I know from the one... Jim says thank you to us both. Yeah, <laughs> you're very welcome, Jim. Happy birthday, Jim. Um, so I know that 10 sheets of paper really doesn't go very far. So I want to make some papers that will complement the papers in the pack. So we're going to go from a piece of paper that I really can't ever see me using. It's dull. <laughs> uh, it came from the, ha the heirloom pack uh, and there's loads of papers in there that I love. I went through it this morning just looking for ones that I didn't like and it was actually quite difficult to find any. Um, but this one, I can't see me using it really, to be honest. So I took that, a piece like that, and I turned it into this, which I can see me using with the papers that we've got. Papers that we've got are, as I say, Stamperia, so they're not foiled or gilded in any way. So I'm adding that pizzazz <laughs> with the papers that I'm going to make. Uh, I'm quite heartened to see that this paper, the stuff in the heirloom, pack for all it's uh, really quite thin I don't know what that would be 100 maybe something like that 100 GSM um, but it's held up well to all the stuff I've thrown at it and I have thrown quite a lot of stuff at it now whether further on I decide to cut that out and make a part of a page or whatever or whether I cut it into tags I don't know yet but I've got this up my sleeve <laughs> It's not up my sleeve at all. It's on the table. <laughs> um, and yeah, go from there and make some of a similar ilk. But maybe, you know, not the same. But just so you know what I'm on about, these are the papers. Stamperia, Stamperia Atelier des Arts. Art studio to you and me. So I'll just open them up and we can have a look through. If you don't fall in love with these, honestly, I'm absolutely, totally and utterly in love with them. They're fabulous. And I would have thought people like Susan, Carey perhaps, arty sort of folk would join me in just... Oh, drooling over these so yeah that's the cover and there are bits in the cover that you can use you know they, they tend not to be very big but I've found out in this project I've been doing through the week which I'll show you later um, that every little bit counts I can tell you so there we go we've got all uh, sort of little journaling cards and bits to stick on here there and everywhere um, I think we're all in English this time so step down Janya, you're all right. <laughs> um, yeah, they're all lovely, but look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. How could you ever cut into that? I'm gonna to have to make a 12 by 12 mini album. I'm, I'm not, but oh, it's just beautiful. And this page with all the paint and oh, look at that. It's a, it is a glorious paper pad. And this, I, I really like the colours in this. So, sort of blues, maroons, greens. And 
I've got my own paints, obviously, but if you haven't and you're trying to get a paints that match this, I know that Stamperia have brought out um, a set of paints that go with this exclusively. So, you, you know, you can't go wrong. Stamperia says these are the colours and they are. I, I wanted to buy it, but I already had paint, so that would have been a bit silly. Um, so, yeah, this beautiful girl. And this, which is very Japanese, but it's also a bit like Vincent, isn't it, really? It's lovely. But look at this. Look at all the things here you can fussy cut. Look at the... Oh, man alive. They're gorgeous. And this. This is probably the one that I've taken my colours from more than anything. I've lost the wretched thing. Here it is. Um, I've sort of picked up on quite a few of these colours. They're not identical, but... You know, the, I hope you can see this sort of match. They're in the right family, at least. And here there's loads of things you can fussy cut out. That is a beautiful collage page, isn't it? And this, this was the one that I was looking at when I did um, my thing. So, yeah, I hope you can see that the colours sort of go. Um, I mean, you can do this, this um, technique that I'm about to show you. You can do it with any paper pad. Just pick out sort of four or five colours that you, th you think are in your pad and go from there. You know, it's not exclusive to this paper pad. Look at that. Oh, the more I look at this, this is, that's my favourite. That's definitely my favourite. I adore that. All those colour swatches. Ooh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. I honestly do not know. Look at all these fussy cuts. How I am ever going to cut this up? I, just, I don't know. Uh, and that's the back page. To make life slightly easier on myself, I did buy an 8x8 as well. So, uh, for those of you in the UK, I bought mine from Dali Art, D A L I, Dali Art Market. And they were much cheaper there than anywhere else that uh, we could find. The 12 by 12 was 9.95, and the 8 by 8 was six pounds fifty. Um, the shipping was 4.29, and it came to a grand total, including tax, etc., of 20 pounds 74. So I mean that's not bad at all, really. And it, yeah. That's right, we paid for next day on that, so just to be sure I would have it for today. So those are my beautiful papers. Right, let's get on to how we actually create... Oh, let's have a roll call, yeah. Jim, hi! Jim, <laughs> special welcome to Jim. Yeah, welcome and happy birthday. For obvious reasons. Terry. Hi, Terry. Deborah, who's avoiding the taxes by watching us. <laughs> I'm not going to help you with your taxes, Deborah. Definitely not. Roz. <laughs> Hi, Roz. Benice. Hello, Benice. Kerry. Hi, Kerry. Violet. Hello, Violet. Janya. Hello, Janya. Shaz. Hi, Shaz. Mike. Hi, Mike. Jan. Hi, Jan. Nancy. Hello, Fancy Nancy. Hi, Will. How are you doing, you two? Hope you're behaving yourselves. Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Erin. Hello, Erin. I think that's it. That's it. Shout out. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's get cracking. So the first thing to do, Nancy, you'll be pleased about this, because I know you've just bought some, is get your gesso out. And now, and now is the time that you will find out the quality of your gesso. Mine is a really good brand. Mine is Golden, which is about the best acrylic paint you can get. Um... I know you can buy cheap gesso and now you'll find out if your gesso is any good because it should cover. Uh, if it, you know, if it doesn't, it's because it's cheap and not doing the job. So I'm just using one of these foam brushes and, you know, there's no rhyme, no reason to this. I'm just covering that background. You don't need to cover it completely if, you know, if there's bits you like or bits you fancy leaving, leave them. You don't have to be uh, exact about this. 
So you see with the gold and you, you do, you really get a good coverage. Some of the cheaper ones, not so much. But this gesso on here will, it's a primer. That's what gesso is. So it'll prime your paper, ready to accept all the other mediums that we chuck at it. And this really is a, a mixed media project. Hi, Lorna. Hi, Lorna. Something a bit different today, Lorna. If only I'd had a stamp I could have used on here. But never mind. <laughs> so I'm just covering the whole... Um, in my case, I'm covering it all because I'm really not keen on what's underneath. Some of it will still come through. Um, that just adds to the layering, really. So this is how I've spent my morning. Trying to get organised and have something nice to show you. Right. So that's fine. I mean, it's by no means even or anything. It's just had a coat of gesso. So it's, be sure and put your brushes as you use them into water. It's acrylic. It'll set like nails and it'll ruin your whatever it is. So that's that. Needs to just go aside for a couple of minutes just to dry. But I have one that I did earlier, haven't I? Yeah, here we are. So you wouldn't have to hang around waiting for me to dry things. Uh, so this is, it's a different pattern as you can see. Um, just about see the pattern through it, I think. Um, and it's just had the same thing, quick coat of gesso over it. Let's just check that the lid is on that and it is. Right, so the first thing to do and it's really exciting. Oh, send you a message. Lorna. Oh, you stinky thing. <laughs> I know we should be wired in that smell of vision. <laughs> oh, Lorna. <laughs> You're a funny girl. <laughs> yeah, Mike, it's funny, isn't it? I'm surprised. I am surprised and pleased the stamps have done as well as they have only five, I think, left in the shop. Wow, doing really well, Lorna. Um, despite everything, the dust and everything else, I hope you get the hang of it because I really do think you'll do well with those stamps. The, the ones that you've done are gorgeous and I can't wait to get mine. Right, so I have selected some colours that I think will uh, go with you know, what I want to do. So, of course, I don't have the exact colours, so I'm going to mix them up. The paints, that, the acrylics that I use for everyday, workaday stuff are these abstract um, acrylics by a company called Sennelier. Sennelier are a very good brand, let me tell you. But these particular paints that they do, these abstract acrylics, are incredibly inexpensive. So you can, you know, what are we playing with here? We're playing with a bit, bit of paper that we wouldn't have used anyway. We've gessoed it. And now we're going to play with these sort of inexpensive paints. So don't get the feeling that you're going wrong because at the very worst, and I can't imagine what you do to make this happen, but at the very worst, just scrumple it up, put it in the bin and start again because it won't have cost you very much. That yellow is shouldn't be there. So I've got five colours. I've got this, which if you remember back to the, the papers, there's a lot of this colour and a lot of blues and a lot of darker version of that. Now I haven't got a darker version of this. This is just, its name is 341 Turquoise. I don't have a darker version. So what I'm going to do is mix through it a little bit of this brown, this dark brown, this burnt umber, which will just knock that back a bit, tame it down a little bit and give me the colour that I want. There are reds and oranges and this colour in the papers. This orange is a bit too bright and it doesn't fit in with the rest. It seems to shout if you look at it, it's, it's not right. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to make my own orange out of the red and the yellow. So then I will have red I'll have this yellow, which is yellow ochre. Then I'll mix the two, so I'll have an orange. So with this, I will have the turquoise of this colour 
and I'll mix brown in with it so I'll have a darker turquoise. So that will give me one, two, three, four, five colours and that's fine. Any more than that it starts to get a bit um, messy. Nancy O'Rourke from California says hi. Hello Nancy O'Rourke from California. Sounds lovely. California. Oh here. California. Oh here. Hmm. I'm going for California. Right, so I've just got a paper plate which Mr F gets from the pound shop. There's, I don't know, 50 for a quid, something like that. So it's completely disposable. Um, and just squeeze a bit out. I'm going to squeeze that bit out for the turquoise that I want. And then another bit for the darker one that I'm going to mix the brown through. So I'm just going to put you don't want that much brown, the brown's quite strong, so not too much. That's probably enough. If it's not enough, we can come back and put more in. Um, the red. This one is called uh, Cadmium Red Light Hue. So I want a bit of that. I want some to mix with the yellow. And it's good if you can keep your colours um into colors that you've mixed rather than always introducing a new one out of the tube uh, sometimes then they can be a bit jarring so try your best to mix your own colors i know it can seem daunting but what you know what is the worst that can happen you end up with some muddy horrible color and you just ditch it and start again we've all ended up with horrible colors or do a mud journal or do a mud journal so that's my orange there, those two colours, and this is the yellowy colour that I want. Right. Because you can always put tiger feet in it. That'll only work if you're British. <laughs> and, and, and are quite old actually and can remember mud. <laughs> Which were a pop group in Britain that had a song called Tiger Feet. Right, so I'm going to mix my burnt umber through my turquoise and see if it knocks it back enough for what we want. Thank you for explaining my comments like you do with a child. Well, I felt it necessary. <laughs> so you can see as I mix that through, it's toning that turquoise down. And it's more of a teal now, I'd say, than a turquoise. And then put it all, scrape it all up into a pile, otherwise it'll just dry out before you get a chance to use it. Now, I'm, you may have noticed I'm using a palette knife and I'm going to be using a palette knife to put this paint on with. Um, mine are a set of what they call artist knives. I don't know, makes them feel better about themselves. Um, but you can go to any of the craft stores and buy a set of these, um, but the plastic, plastic handle, plastic blade, and you get something like 20 in the pack and they are very inexpensive. So it might be a good idea to try that first before you go and buy a set of artist knives. You know, if you don't like it, you've only lost a set of um, plastic palette knives. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that red through this because the red is the dominant color and it'll take over. I think I might need a bit more red in there. It's not orangey enough. So this is what you do. It's a bit like making a cake, you know. A bit more flour, a bit more this, a bit more that. And you just, ooh, that's a lot. And you just mix and mix until you get the colour that you want, really. I don't really want that much orange, but never mind, seem to have it now. And just mix it up and make it nice pop goes the weasel so there we are it's a kind of dark red color more than orange but it's it's fine okay so we've got our five colors so let's make a start i'm just gonna uh, clean that off there make sure that you never leave any of your tools i know i've just said this but it's worth repeating acrylic paint sets quickly and it sets like a rock so, you know, be careful. So I'm going to make a start with this one. 
and I'm just picking some up on the back of my palette knife and you can't go wrong with this there isn't a right or a wrong way just start wherever you fancy and just skid your palette knife over the page you can have it thick you can have it thin um, I like it when it sort of does things like that um, but you know I'm not that accomplished with palette knives that I can make them dance I just want to get some colour on here so I'm not covering up the entire white I'm just putting some colour on it and you don't have to cover the whole thing with one colour either it's better if you don't now if I was doing this not for a live I'd leave thicker bits of this but I want it to dry this side of Christmas so I mean oh, that's lovely I love that um, so I'm kind of scraping mine out quite a lot so you, you'll just get the hang of it you just take your, your palette knife a little bit of grit on there Gunny and Zanet say hi hi Gunny hi Zanet thanks for joining us just take your palette knife and you, you just scoop up a bit on the back of it like that so there's nothing on the front just on the back and then you just almost hover it above the paper and just spread it out just like you're icing a cake nothing more complicated than that honestly it's not some of you i'm sure shaz for example has seen me go through this process probably more times than you care to eh shaz So if you weren't in a hurry to get your um, gesso dry, if you leave sort of big brush marks in your gesso, it makes this stage this stage easier because the palette knife will pick up on the ridges from the gesso. So that's about all I can get off here, I think. I think we've about exhausted that. There we go, right. So I'm now going to move on to the, I don't know why I'm turning it this way, there isn't a right and a wrong way, <laughs> just feel like there is. I'm now going to move on to the bright turquoise. Same thing, just pick up a bit on the back of your palette knife like that, there's nothing on the front, and just ice that cake. So I'm sort of vaguely going for where there's white spaces, but not overly and actually doing this is just it's a lovely thing to do because you you genuinely can't get it wrong I like things that you genuinely can't get wrong you feel safe doing them don't you and every day is a surprise because it turns out differently every time So I'm just going to go until I've used all this colour up, um, just because I don't want to waste the paint particularly. But you can stop at any stage that you think you've got enough colour of that particular colour on. So I'm going to put a little bit up there, a little bit down here. I mean, it may be in the future that this page gets cut up into tags or journaling cards. So you want to make sure that you've got something that would be nice but don't don't stress about it this is really early stages right so that's all of that color <coughs> excuse me so now i'm going to move on to the red i think i'm just going to wipe my knife off it will get muddied somewhat on this on these colors it's a good idea just i'm just going to give it a really quick blast because i don't want to mix the red in with that so excuse me for a minute Just silent, Thank you. 
Okay, that'll be dry enough. It's uh, I don't think it's bone dry, but dry enough. So I'm going for the red and I'm just going to take a, a smaller piece. In fact, that's probably too much, just a little bit. And I'm just going for splashes of this. Not big. pieces and turn it as you go if you want to there's no right or wrong way with this just turn it because you will I'm left-handed so I find that stroke easiest if you're right-handed you'll find that way easiest obviously so turn it so it's easy for yourself and I just want little bits of this around the place I don't want it Red will dominate, given half the chance, given quarter of the chance. So I just want little specks of it around. Okay, that, I think that's, that's fine. So now I'll move on to the orange. And then if it sort of muddies, it doesn't really matter because it's... Blame me, I don't know where I'm going with all that much. Um, so the same thing. Yep. Laurie Juniper says hi. Hi Laurie. First time catching a live. Oh well it's really nice to have you. She loves your style and colour choices, makes her heart sing. Oh, that's so nice. So once again, this is just freedom. Just put this where you fancy putting it. Do you think it would look nice there? Put a piece there. So I'm just going round willy-nilly. That's what I'm doing. Just willy-nilly. Just getting this layer, which is what it is, which is what this is all about. Adding layers to add interest in the end. The more layers you have, the more... I mean, if we look at this one that I've completed... You can see there's a lot of layers in there. You know, it looks like it's going back and back. And all that's just created the way that I'm showing you now. There we go. I'm sure that's plenty, if not too much. So I just wipe the what's left there. It will, it'll, it'll mix up, but it doesn't matter. So I'm taking this uh, yellow ochre and it'll brighten areas. I'm not adding white at this stage. I will add a bit of white later on, but not now. Um, you'll see why in a minute. So this is quite different to the one that I showed. Well, it's the same but different, <laughs> if it can be. Uh, the other one had sort of bigger clumps of colours together. It's all starting to go one way, which I don't want. I want it random. Human brains don't do random very well. We like older. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, and that's me finished with the paints, with those sort of paints anyway. So I just need to dry this, but dry it relatively well to go on to the next stage. Don't forget to put your knife or your uh, painting implement into the water. You can try this with a brush if you want to. I've never been very successful. I find a palette knife is much more random and gives you more random marks. But if you haven't got one and you want to crack on with it, try it with a brush by all means. See what happens. You can't go wrong. Anything? Credit card? Yeah, credit card. Ice scraper from the car? Yeah, anything. Anything at all that's going to get you some paint down on there. So excuse me for a minute while I dry this, but I really have to for the next stage. Donna says hi. Hiya Donna, Donna Crogan. Yeah. Hiya Donna. She's finally caught alive. <laughs> I'm hoping all is well in your world. Hi 
This will just take a while because some of the bits are a bit thicker than others. I know this is quite different from what we normally do. I'm aware of that. And I know that it won't be everybody's cup of tea. Cup of tea? <laughs> but um, I, I do think it'll make our papers go further. And I do think that because of the subject, the art studio, I think we can probably get away with it. No, it's not dry. <laughs> I've had to get a new dirty Timmy towel today. Look at it. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't bear to put acrylic paint all over my Timmy towel. So I had to get a secondary, even worse condition Timmy towel. And for those of you that are going, what is she going on about? Well, I'd like to say our leader, Tim Holtz, is, is pretty much leads the way, doesn't he? Um, always has a a damp towel, mine's not damp, but a damp towel that he wipes his stamps with, he would wipe this glass mat with, because um, he's a very, very good demonstrator and very organised. This is a great way to use the papers you don't like. Yeah, that's the thing, Kerry, get them used up. And the Jenny says, it looks like we're trying it out tonight. Oh, great. I know I've succeeded if Jania wants to try it out. Right, that's probably dry enough, actually, for the next step right the next step involves stencils and it can be any stencils that you've got oh it's soaking under there um yeah they're brilliant aren't they I don't know how i survived with that one actually okay yeah stencils don't think oh she used that i must have one like that you can use whatever stencils you've got. I'll just go through a few with you that I've got that I contemplated using. You've seen them all before. They're really ones that I really use all the time. The butterfly one. Um, I could do some behind this so you could see it. The beehive one, the whatever you call them. Honeycomb. Honeycomb, yeah, that's the fella. Uh, this one that I made out of a Tim Holtz die that I've got, I ran it through with Mylar and got myself a stencil. Uh, this one was the same, it was a Tim Holtz die. Ran it through with this Mylar and get stencils from it. Uh, this one, I've had this for so many years and I keep going back to it. It's just a really good sort of texture like stone gives the idea of stones perhaps uh this one is an i mean look at it it's caked on um but it's a good harlequin one i like it it's another old favorite and the last one is the one another one from the timmy set same dies um same die set i don't know how well you can see that it's really nice it's like a sort of moroccan wall type effect but the one that i chose to go with is another even older stencil that I have used, honestly, a hundred million times, at least. <laughs> and it's this damask one. And I've never washed it at all from the day that it was cut. Mr. F cut it for me. So maybe you can see it more clearly like that. Okay. So I don't want to fill the whole thing in uh, with stencils. Just some areas random areas really so i'm going to be moving this around the sheet and i'm going to be using modeling paste um this is quite a big jar oh, you don't need a jar this size i don't need a jar this size i used to use it quite a lot but uh, not so much nowadays and you need a palette knife another one of your palette knives um and it's the same thing, same technique. I'm going to start at the, well, what's the top to me now? And then I can move my uh, stencil down as I go. Um, so you just pick some up, same as you did with the paint. Pick it up on the back of your uh, artist's knife. Hold your stencil really close, otherwise you'll get um, 
weeping stencils. And who wants a weeping stencil? Can you say she's got one similar to that and she gets really excited when she has something that you've got? <laughs> I adore this damask stencil. And Terry says she's bought scan and cut so she can make stencils. Wow, brilliant. Scan and, and cut. Nancy says she met Tim about 12 years ago at a craft thing and he's a very good live demonstrator. Yeah, he strikes me as a brilliant demonstrator. He's very attentive and he's good at answering questions. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, it's gone up in my estimation. So that's that one. And just you know, just peel it back and you'll see. I hope you can see it there. And I'm just going to randomly put these around the place. <coughs> and Lorna says she can make some on the laser. She loves that pattern. Yeah, I do. I've used this, honestly, time and time and time again. Um, there's a bit there that I quite like. I'm going to go for that bit there. I think the first, we first had it when we were painting furniture, didn't we? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so. I used it a lot on furniture. So push push it through, but if you've got time, you know, if you're not waiting for it, which we all are all the time, I know, put it on relatively thickly. I'm scraping this off as much as I can so that it'll get dry. Um, but that's fine. You know, it's okay. It's given us the, the look that we're after. So I'm going to use that same one. The, well, there's no way around it. You just got to make sure you don't press where the, where the others are, where you've just put put it on. I mean, it has got the weight of the stencil, which in my case is quite quite weighty because it's got loads of paint on it. Um, so I'm not sticking to a shape. Um, you know, there'll be little bits going outside the emblem that I'm looking at. I'm not worried about that. That's fine. So, ooh, that's a wet bit of paint. Um, let's put one down here. Is there any near the top? So I don't have to go over my... Yeah, Leslie M says she doesn't have any modelling paste. Is there anything else she could use? Yes, yeah, some people use what I believe you call in the States spackle. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that they've used that. Uh, what we may call polyfiller. Yeah, polyfiller. And you can buy it ready-made up in pot tubs, you know from, um, I don't know what your shops are called, but in B&Q and Wilkes and stuff over here. I have never used it. I always think my artwork deserves the best I can afford. Um, and I'd be so worried that it would dry out and crack off. But people say it doesn't. People genuinely say it doesn't, that it clings and it's good. I've used it. Yeah, you used it on a picture, didn't you? Yes. To yeah, at the top of the, top stairs. Of the stairs, yeah. Shall get them? Uh, if you want to. No, that's all right. Yeah, we have used it. We have used it. I'm lying. Um, I've used it. Yeah. I'm just going to go for half a one there. And it doesn't matter that it kind of is the same as that one, because times they are changing. My advice would be to get one that's for the deeper holes. Because uh, it, yeah. it has more, more binders in them. Yeah. Rather than the one that you just skimmer over a hole. Yeah. The one that's actually full filling holes has more binders. So it's easier to model with. Yes. Good advice there. That was a bit of wet paint there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, honestly, it doesn't matter. You could have mixed paint in with this if you'd wanted to. But I wanted the white. So there we are. That's all I'm going to do with regards to that. You can cover your whole thing if you want to. Um, do you want me to wash that? You can. It's never been washed in its life. So well, please take care with it. It's just the modern paste. I yeah. Mean, really. Yeah. I'm not going to scrub it clean. So that's us finished with a modeling paste. So let's put that in the water because modeling paste will do the same. It will set and you'll regret it. 
Right, so we're finished with the gesso, finished with the modelling paste. Now that I have to leave to one side to dry. I can't really dry that in a hurry. Um, it's better just to leave it. It doesn't take long. In a room as warm as this, which is regular room temperature, I think, it might take half an hour. So by the time you've made yourself a coffee, etc., uh, you'll be there. So I, I, I did one this morning because I knew I'd reach this stage and would be stuck if I, hadn't, if I hadn't already had one prepared. So it's just clean off that modeling paste. So there you go. I mean, it's similar, but not similar. It's the same colors. It's, you know, same background, etc. So the next thing we need to do is really get dirty down and dirty. Now, you can use the same colors that you used on here with the addition I would say of a black. A black is a is a always a good addition, as is a white. If you if you're setting off to buy acrylic paints, I would say get yourself a black, a white, a red, a blue, and a yellow. Those are your primary colours. And you you'll be able to mix most colours that you want from them. But um, like I say, these ones become, you know, ready mixed. I think there's about 90 of them. And I think they're about 250 each. They're really not expensive. Okay, so this is nice and dry. Did it before lunch. So the next thing is water down your paints that you've already used. <coughs> um, if you're lucky enough, and I am lucky enough, and I know not everybody has them. I've got liquid acrylics here. And these are actually made for airbrushes. So they're really, really fine to go through the nozzle of an airbrush. Um, I also have some golden liquid acrylics, which are the same. And liquid acrylics are better than just watering your paint down because you water your paint down and it's diluted. The color is diluted. Whereas these are a good, strong, solid color. So I've got this yellow ochre sort of colour. I've got a white, I've got a black, I've got a red, and I've got a sort of greeny, turquoisey, thalo green is what it calls it. So, right, so what we're going to do is, if you have got these <laughs> exact ones, <coughs> or ones similar, excuse me, Make sure your finger is over the end before you start shaking them because you can just imagine, can't you, the mess that you'd get into. So I'm starting with this green simply because it was the one nearest to me. Once you hear those little balls rattling around, you know you're good to go. So I'm just going to put some across the top of my page. Quite a bit. And I'm going to pick it up and let it run. And I'm going to get my water mister out and just mist that down and let it run let it run over the modeling paste now i don't like these big drips they're not my thing I, I like the way it runs but i don't like the big drips but i do like that that's nice um and i'll do another bit that's green as well i'll make it green this bit along here And pick it up and let it run a little bit more a bit of water encourage it to run so you see this is messy work whoa that's a lot oh that's gone into my modeling paste which is lovely so i'm just going to run that around a bit and see if i can get it to cover that modeling paste or at least some of it yeah that's nice so I'm just going to catch these these drips. If you like drips, and I know a lot of people do, that's great. Leave them, but I'm just I'm not overly keen on drips. Um, right, is this going to roll around when I move it? Yeah, a bit. I think we'll be okay. All right, so let's move on to red because it's the next one in my uh, array. Want some red on my finger there, so I'll just stick it on the paper. We'll just do the same thing, just a bit of red. On any edge, it doesn't matter. I'm not being specific about which edge this is going on. Just making sure I've got quite a 
reasonable amount of colour and let it run. Oh, this one's running into there, into that one. Let's just help it on its way. So you see, you can never really get two the same because they just don't act the same. That's nice. Let's get rid of these drips. Um, where do I want to go now? I'll come over, I'll come over here, see what happens with the red. See if I can, whoa, don't do that. That's just rude. So I've got quite a lot of red there. So if I turn it that way, it'll go through that modeling paste that we put on. I've still got quite a bit up here. It's amazing that this paper takes all this. I, can't, I couldn't believe it this morning that it was actually taking everything I was throwing at it. So I've just got a few excess bits there and there. Right, so now it's, get, it's beginning to get interesting, isn't it? It's, it's beginning to look nice. Um, oh, it's screw your lids back on. <laughs> Disaster could befall you if you don't. Especially if you're working in the dining room or kitchen. <laughs> oh dear, I've dropped so much acrylic paint on the floor. It's not, it's unreal. So let's try a little bit of this yellow. See what we can get happening with it. Maybe not round the edge this time. Maybe we'll aim for this one here. Oh, that is a lot of colour. Shut that up before it spill it. Yeah, that is a lot of colour. Pinch down, you need to stick some off. No, be alright. I'm going to send it hither and thither. Nancy says she's got some very creative grandchildren. This is a perfect project for them. Oh, I think they'd love it, Nancy. I think you'd like it too, actually. Right, so I think I think that's gone as far as I want it to go. I do quite like that, actually. It's a bit of definition in the wilderness. So I'll just blot it off a little bit. Uh, this one's still naked. But what I think I'll do is add some black. Black adds drama and be careful with it because a little goes a long way. But if you see the one that I did earlier, there's the black and there's the black. And it kind of gives that feeling that you're going away, that this is all going away from you. Like a universe or something. I don't know. Talking rubbish probably. So I'm going to add the black and I'm really not going to add much. I'm not even going to turn it out all the way. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so there's a little bit along the top. Get my water bottle out. Right, let's make it run, but then I'm going to mop it up. Make it run a bit more than that. See how little goes such a long way. Right, let's mop that up. Right over the top of it. See why I didn't want to use my good Timmy towel, can't you? So I've got black there. That's fine. In fact, I want a little bit more just along there. Looks a bit like somebody's just put it in a corner. So this is, I mean, it's playtime is what it is, really. You can do what you want to do. Send your paint wherever you want to send it. I'm going to leave that quite dark black at the top. I quite like that, apart from the towel, obvious towel marks in it. Yeah, I quite like that. Um, and I want, to, I want some black on another side as well. 
to give it that feeling. I mean, I don't know why I'm bothering so much because quite honestly, these are going to be cut up. So they're not going to look <laughs> like this at the end. But just for my own um, peace of mind, I'm going to put some black up here. They look good when they're in storage waiting to be used though, don't they? <laughs> not if you've done it yourself, because you can always see mistakes, can't you? And I don't see how you could possibly make a mistake with this, to be honest. No, it's true. There's not many mistakes to be made. So I'm really watering that down. It's running madly. It's going to run into that, which is nice. Let's send it that way. So I've got all sorts of weird colours running off here now. Let's find a bit of absorbent towel. So, yeah, don't panic is the thing. Never panic. It's not something ever that your Timmy towel can't sort out. So, yeah, I like that there. That's nice. I might, I might, just, I might just come around that corner a little bit. Yeah, I don't want too much, but just a little bit. Come on. Come on. That's it. You could do it. Isn't it incredible this paper's holding up to this? I can't believe it. I'm probably going to use more of the paper as backgrounds than I am for anything else. So I'm just going to mop that up there a little bit. Okay, yeah, now I'm happy with that. And now I'm afraid you know what's going to happen, don't you? I have to dry it. So there's not much I can do with that in the state that it's in. Let me just wipe up my table, which seems to be covered in black paint. And down here as well. Oh my goodness me. I should have had a tarpaulin or something out. Be careful if you're doing this at home because it, it's a... It's a messy craft. Right, sorry about this guys, bear with me. I will be back to you as soon as I possibly can. enough yeah um mr f just said leslie said they'd make good journal covers and i, I just laughingly said yeah leslie would sew them but then i got to thinking you know if you if you cut it up and actually did make it the cover of your journal it'd be quite good wouldn't it especially with some fussy cuts from the papers and stuff anyway that's down the line right the next thing i'm going to do is stamp on it and once again use whatever stamp you want to I wanted to use that stamp that I used last week on Edith, but I can't find it. So um, I'm just going to use a text, a really old text stamp. It's, it's firmly adhered to this block, so I can't get it off. 
what did we do? Nancy Rook says, perfect project for when you want to get started on something. Yeah, just to get your mojo going a bit. Ian Oren. Yes. Yeah. E, what am I going to do? Yeah. No, I agree there, Nancy. I do. Don't forget to put photos up, Fancy Nancy, if your grandkids... Uh, do do this, or if you do it, or if anybody does no, it. No, it was Nancy O'Rourke. Oh, it was Nancy O'Rourke, was it? Yes. Sorry, Nancy. So it's just, it's there, but it's kind of uh, not there, you know, it's just there, so to speak. So it doesn't matter which um, angle you go at here, because... We don't know what we're going to make it into and it's quite good to have things at all sorts of angles it doesn't uh, liz has got to go oh it's a nice idea and can't wait to try it oh she'll, thanks leslie you'll finish watching later okay have a nice day and nancy o'rourke says so many nancy's so little time <laughs> we're well, lucky we've got two nancy's and fancy nancy says the grandkids would love it yeah that's why i thought it was um your comment, Nancy. Look, we're just going to have to call Nancy Fancy and Nancy Nancy because I'm just going to get confused. So I'm stamping. If you get a third one, we're really in trouble. We're really in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we really are. I, I'm literally stamping wherever the notion strikes me. I'm going to cross there. Uh, a little bit in there and a bit down here. Yeah, that's fine. So I've kind of covered it, I suppose, loosely. Loosely covered it. And I'm using stone grey. Using stays on um, in stone grey. The reason I'm using stays on is that if I decide to go back in again with oxides or anything like that and want to spray them, the stays on will stay put. If you use distress ink or oxide, it's water reactive. So as soon as you put water on it, it'll um, disperse. Stays on, however, won't. It'll be there for all time. Uh, right, so the next thing that I want to do is have a think. Thinking, thinking, thinking. What did I do next? I think I... Mm. Yeah, I think I used something that else I'm going to have to dry. Now, this is a little pot of delight. <laughs> you might have seen me use it before if you've been watching me for a while. I think I used it on the Christmas one, maybe. It's Cosmic Shimmer is the brand, and it's called Sparkle Texture Paste. And uh, I've only got the Copper Penny. Penny Copper, it's called. That's the only one I've got. Um... I wouldn't mind a gold one, actually. Actually, I might not use that. I've told you about it now. It's fabulous. It's like texture paste. Well, in fact, it is. But it's got glitter in it. It's glorious. It's what I used in this one. Uh, here. It's really, really, really sparkly and lovely. But it does take a little while to dry, so I'm going to change my mind. And uh, on the Mariposa, we've been using the Cosmic Shimmer metal gilding polish I don't know where the thing is for that let's have a look and see if it's in. oh yeah here it is here it is let's just be left right so this goes through stencils so I want a different stencil from the damask that I used before look, here they are um, I quite like the Harlequin one, I must be honest. Um, and I like that one, which is Harlequin, but just a little bit smaller, which might be more appropriate for this. So that's uh, my choice. You can use anything, any stencil you like. So this is called Cosmic Shimmer Ocean Teal Gilding Polish. And it comes with this in the lid. And, and this is the applicator. It snaps out. Then you sort of run it around the product, load your sponge up, brush it off on the rim of the pot, and then take your stencil and go stenciling. 
And this dries really quickly. It's acrylic. It dries very quickly. So I don't want a definite shape here. Oh yeah, I like that. So, can you see that glinting? That is lovely, lovely. And it's in, in keeping. We've got a lot of turquoises in here, so that'll be fine. So like I say, I don't want a definite shape. Just a little bit of it here and there. So that same, you know, loading up my sponge, it's still, I'm still using the same. I haven't been back to load up my sponge anymore is what I'm trying to say. And this, it, it doesn't go on thickly, it doesn't need to. Um, just a little couple in there maybe. And I don't think I want it in the black, but maybe just underneath it. Like that. Okay. That's probably sufficient, I would say, because it's quite powerful stuff. So there we are. We're beginning to get our fancy pants. Beginning to get our fancy pants on. <laughs> right, what did I do then? Does anybody know? Then I splattered. That's what I did. So let's get this paint out. Now, if you haven't got white, you know, this uh, liquid white, and you haven't even got any white acrylic, just use your gesso and water it down. It'll be fine. It'll be all right on the night. I mean, in business now, Johnny, that my sleeves are getting rolled up. <laughs> So put a bit on your plate, and this this is runny, so it will run, obviously. And I don't want it to run everywhere. So I'm using a fan brush. These are the best to get splatters. If you haven't got a fan brush, just use the brush that you've got. Um, but these are good for splatters. So I'm going to wet my brush first, and then pick up some of this white paint and literally splatter. And I want some of it up in that black. So I want it to look like stars in a universe. But be quite liberal. And the more paint you've got on your brush, the bigger the splatters tend to be. So I, I quite like big splats. And I'm putting it everywhere because, as I say, I don't know how I'm going to cut it up. Oh, that was a nice one. Right, that's the splatters on. So and put your brush in water. I think I've finished with that now. Right, the next thing to do. Francis says this is relaxing to watch, you're putting it to sleep. Oh Lord. <laughs> Thanks for that. That's good to know. And Nancy said, I love it when you think it's complete. But wait, there's more. There's <laughs> always <So> more. <laughs> Even when there's when it's more, it, the, you could do more. Right, what did I do next to this then? I did, um, yeah, I think we're kind of getting there, you know, guys. I put on uh, some embossing um, powder, you know. I emboss things. <laughs> oh dear, it's not easy. It's not easy being me. I'm just going to give that a quick bzzz because uh, those white dots are not dry. So don't be deceived into thinking they're dry because they're not. Can you help us handle? Yeah, Mr. F says, Donna says she's got the, um, eh? yeah, yeah, um, Donna, Mr. F says, Donna's just said that she's got the, uh, stuff, and of course you have, Donna, you're an artist, woman, 
um, the things that you do are lovely so yeah crack on do it and please post a picture in the group the group is called junk journals and mini albums straightforward that's what it is junk journals and mini albums and today we're making an art journal page <laughs> we get around don't we eh? is that dry yeah I think that's dry now lovely so now I'm going to go embossing you can use any stamp you like. I did look a butterfly stamp out for this because I thought it would be quite nice. And then I thought, no, it was probably all a bit... Um, what's the word? Predictable. Predictable is the word. So I've got my uh, anti-static bag from Fancy. Thank you, Fancy. And I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to put a stamp here. So I'm just going to rub this over. I mean, there's loads of things for it to stick onto, so um, the thing is that the stamp does not want to stick onto the back, to the block, so. <laughs> no, it's all right. Glue stick, does it? Oh, yeah, glue stick. Yeah, I will do that. I'll glue stick it on. By the look of that block, it's had other things glue stick, sticked. <laughs> glue sticked. Oh, dear. When I grow up, I'm going to be very eloquent <laughs> but that's not yet obviously Nancy says you could scan this for future projects because you made it yourself there's no copyright that's true up to this point when I'm about to use a stamp that I don't know whether it has an angel policy or not so I've put embossing stuff all over my stamp I've got paper there ready to catch the excess. I did look out both turquoise and gold, but I'm going to go for gold because we've got the turquoise in that um, Harlequin thing there. Got that open. I'm ready to rock. Please don't fall off. So I'm just going to put that there. This is just, it's just a stamp. It, it's a flowers or something. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to pick it out anyway when it's on here. It's just, you see the gold embossing which I like so let's see if that did anything oh yeah oh yeah right let's get this put away because you know my track record with this guys it's not altogether good <laughs> in fact it has been bad on occasions when I spilt the whole tub right let's emboss this then see what gives I don't think it's one of those that you're going to go wow I think it's more a sort of backgroundy one but I quite like it Isn't it magic? It never fails to impress me when embossing powder just goes. It's fabulous. I think that's about it. I can see that coming through now. Can you? Oh, yeah. good. So, yeah, that's that. Oh, it's, it's really pretty. It's it's just flowers. It hasn't even stamped particularly well, but that really doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter. Right, so I'm thinking one kind of there, there-ish. So um, I probably only need to do half of this. Uh, Fancy says I understand that the stamps don't have a angel copyright for the image. Oh really? Oh well, that's good to know. So I'm just going to put kind of half of it here. Like I say, I'm not going for exact here, which is good because I've just lifted it up. Um, I just want some gold. Yeah, and Janya says she loves it with three green hearts. Oh, thank you, Janya. Which I three. Think is 
Janya's eyes compliment, I think. Three. Please not. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. <gasps> Bend. And Kerry says she missed five minutes because the internet went down. Oh, stupid internet. It's just more of the same, really, Kerry, to be honest. <laughs> Just now we're embossing. We'll put that stuff on, which is the Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Polish, which I adore. I love this stuff. I mean, to be fair, if it wasn't for the internet, we'd just be too lunatics talking to each other. Yeah, that's true. Which we are the rest of the time, aren't we? Basically, yeah. yeah. Oh, that one's come out nicely, is not it? Can you see that, guys? Yeah, I think you can. It's, it's kind of, there's a flower there and some buds and stuff. But that's what I want. I, I want it so as it's not definite something. Um, I think one more of these and that will be about it. Don't want them everywhere. Don't want them becoming common there, I think. Yeah, it's a good idea that Nancy to scan them in. I mean, even if I was just doing it, you know, for myself, scan them in and then you've got more to cut at and mess around with the colours and stuff. Right, so I'm going to put that there, wherever it drops, basically. Could I just ask you to rinse that, please? It's just got that embossing stuff on, so yeah. stick like a pig. I think if you were to print it out on glossy photo paper, you'd probably retain some of that yeah. vibrancy. Glossy photo paper. We've got loads. Never use it. Good idea. Yeah, that's okay. Like I say, I'm not, I'm really, really not going for perfect here. Just, this is just um, a means to get some gold on the paper. In, in something that looks like a pattern, but maybe not be discernible. Okay. So we've gone through quite a lot of products today, haven't we guys? That's what they're for. Right, let's heat this fella up. Now oh, that's really nice actually, it's a really nice stamp, which I'm sure I wouldn't have got if I'd been going just for the stamp. Um, yeah, that's the other way up. Oh no, they're all that way. Are they all that way? Yeah, they're all that way. So there we are. I think we're probably about finished with that. Let me just have a look at my other one and make sure that I haven't missed anything out. Uh, no, I think we're good. Thank you, my love. Um, Right, I just think that it could do with lightening a little bit. Need some white on it. We've taken all the colour away and it's gone a bit, a little bit dark. So I'm just going to use some of this liquid uh, white. I don't want much of it. I don't want to cover the nice bits, but it's just gone a little bit on the dark side. It's moved over to the dark side. <laughs> Nancy says the lunatic, the loony and tick show. <laughs> That's funny, Nancy. Yeah, the loony and tick show. Are you loony or tick? I, I want to be loony. I, li I like being loony better. 
is Jen and Mike still there? Seem very um, quiet today. He, he Mike's been commenting, yes. Huh? He said, bad internet to the naughty step for the internet. Ah, oh, sorry about that. That's awful. Right, I quite like that there. Let's just run it down a little bit, see what happens, see where it goes. And Nancy says she has tons of glossy photo paper, so it'd be nice to use it. Yeah, me too, Nancy. I'm just going to add some water to the bottom of these drips, just to stop them looking like drips, but make the paint travel a bit further. Which is a good trick to do. Oops, sprayed myself. And Charles says she thinks this is the best ever. Oh Charles, thank you so much. I appreciate that Charles. Right, so there we are. I quite like the way that's just tucked into that gold there. It's just brightened it a little bit, hasn't it? So I'm going to put some, <laughs> flushed with success, I'm going to put some about there. Just a bit of balance, a bit of lightness coming through. That's quite a lot of paint in actuality. But let's see what happens, eh? I'm going to try these things, haven't you? How do you know if you don't try? Ooh, look at that going through that modelling paste. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Okay, I'm just going to mop up some of that from around about that I don't want. And leave that. I, I like I, that. That adds something in my mind. I don't know what. I don't know if it needs it here as well. I like this now. It looks bright and alive. The the dark on the edge brings your eye in. I just been stupid here, Mister Ruffer. Are you? No, no. I'm loving the dark. You loving the dark? Yeah, I like the dark. You want some more dark on it? No. 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 Okay, well, there we go. I think we've completed that, ladies and gents. Are you still watching, Jim? You're still with us? <laughs> She's still making you watch. <laughs> um, that That's it. I've finished. Um, I, I honestly could go on and on and on. But we started off with a, a crappy piece of um, 12 by 12 that I know I would never have used. And we've ended up with this, which is right up my street, I must say. I love the um, I love the golds, I love the turquoise. I like the jolts of red, which there was a lot of red when we first did it, but you see all the layers on top, things get knocked back quite a lot. I like this turquoise next to the red. There's, there's elements that I do like. Um, invariably, there's elements that you, that you do that you think, mm, I'm not sure that worked so well. But all in all, all in all, it's all right. Yeah, it's fine. So I'll leave that to dry naturally whilst I just tidy up a little bit and show you what I've been... <laughs> clean my hands, possibly, and show you what I've been up to this week, which is very different from this. I'm going to have to just dab that a little bit because it's just uh, going to run everywhere. So I'll pop that there. Um just move those to the side clean my glass board oh my goodness I could emboss my table she, says nice. it, she thinks it's calling for a boho journal <laughs> yeah I thought someone I just knew someone would say that could you bring the pan scrubber from the kitchen please for your hands yeah for my hands okay. acrylic is awful stuff to get off it really is um is one of the reasons that i stopped painting with acrylic because it's just so messy let me put that down out of the way 
somewhere. Make sure this is clean. I might put something on there actually. Like that. Because I know that is clean. Before I get out what I've um, done. No, no, I'm not signing off yet. I want to show you what I've been up to this week. Then it's probably time to sign off in fairness. Oh, oh look at this. Is that washing up liquid in the bottom? Yeah. Oh, new pan scrubber, wow. Now you never thought that you'd see this, did you? <laughs> During a live, you've got to wash your hands. But I have to, because I just would hate to get paint on what I'm about to show you, because too much work in it. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, guys. It's ridiculous. Sorry, Jim, that she's making you watch this lunacy. But, you know, things have to happen. And then, after I've shown you this, we'll have a look back at what we've done today. And see whether we like it or we don't or how it's drying. That's great. Thank you Benice very much. Got to go. Who? Benice. Oh, Benice. She's got to plant some veggies. All right then, Benice. Thanks for all your lovely comments on the videos throughout the week. I really do appreciate them. Um, and enjoy your gardening. Nice thing to do. Right, that's me sort of clean, cleaned up a bit. Okay, so this is the project I've been working on this week. It's not quite finished yet. I was hoping I'd have it finished for you today, but I haven't. It's, do you remember I showed you those patchwork papers? A pack of patchwork papers that I had. Well, I decided to use them uh, along with, I only had the one, the same problem, 10 sheets of paper um, and I needed more. So I decided to mix them up with some primary colors and orange, a red, a yellow, orange and this turquoisey blue because it all seemed to go rather well with the with the kit and the cover says life is good that's the spine it's a three inch spine and when we come to um doing the mariposa uh, binding it'll look obviously a different image on but it'll be that width i think three inches i think we'll get away with that and then the back is just plain straightforward uh, just with some stars on. I'm imagining that this would be really good for like, um, see I haven't got my pages put in yet, but that's the next job. Um, for like a child's birthday party or, um, I don't know, something like that. You know, when they turn one or six or whatever. I just, I really like it. So it's a little pocket with some alphabets, a couple of um, little tags in there from the kit. These are the fins or the spines that we attach our journal to and I've decorated between each one because you can see between each one. Um, this is the inside back cover and by this stage I was really 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 running out of paper so I've used my complementary paper and just to strip out the kit and it's full of stars which the journal is and then I've put this big journaling card in here little card there uh, these squares come in the kit and I've just backed it with yellow and that's that was my last sort of piece of any size so I used it for that um, yeah the back cover you've seen so these are the pages let's pop that to one side um, I'll pop all of those to one side actually uh, this uh, this is a little Tim Holtz pointer and brad and we will be using it in the Mariposa. Uh, they're, they're really nice. I can't find them on the website at the moment. Um, so I'm hoping that he hasn't stopped doing them. They're really handy and it just swings out of the way and then allows you to open that up. And that opens like that. And then what's that? Oh yeah, it's Tommy Tuck. And it's got this big uh, journaling photomat, should I say, in there. So uh, that's that one and it just closes up like that and it's just brilliant for keeping it closed. And on the back of here we've got a double pocket and in each pocket we've got 
one of these uh, little squares that comes with the kit and I've just made it into a little card with some of the uh, complimentary paper that I had. It's, I had quite a few bits of paper that were that width so I wanted to use them up so this was um, what I came up with. Um, and this has got the same sort of arrangement in Make-A-Wish um, little card there made out of the complimentary paper and the tags are backed with the card as well so that's that page next page is this one um, I really love that it's gorgeous and it just makes me think of birthdays to be honest and that opens like that it's got magnets and then it opens again and this one does again so it's quite a large area there for putting photographs in and these are just held at the bottom so you could put sort of clean bit of paper anywhere so you know you can put a photo in there and it'll stay in there without having to mount it or anything and then here's a big area here for a nice photo so it just folds up like that folds up like that and there we have it and the back of that one is this is a lovely page i enjoyed making this page it's a pocket but it's got this at the top and it's held with a magnet and it just flicks down like that and there's your pocket magical um and this is a bit of the alphabet they had all the letters in the kit um backed onto there this really was a bit that i had left over um and that was a little card that you get in the kit so they all fit into there and that goes up and clicks down so that's the second page there's only three have we looked at that one yet i don't think we've looked at the back of this one yet yeah, we have so it must be this one then next so uh i put stars throughout and i, I bought a star punch actually um because I, I needed so many stars it was driving me mad so that's just held on a magnet then this beautiful paper opens up, then there's this, then that. This I haven't really got round to, but I just, I, this is what I've got left, strips like this. So to use them up and to incorporate everything, I put that onto there. So that all goes like that, it clips shut like so. And then on the back of there, we've got this big pocket and this big um, sort of, I don't know what you call it. I don't know what it's called. Um, a thing, folder thing. It's a big pocket down there. Two of those little postcard size things in there. So there's plenty, plenty spaces to put photographs. That opens up. Uh, po big pocket down there. Two more of those um, postcards. Three alphabet ones. And this one's just a roundel that came with a kit with a, the last of the postcards popped into there. And I haven't got round to starring the back yet. And that just uh, fits into there nicely like that. Have we done the other side? Yeah, that's it. So that's what I've been busy with this week. I don't quite know how it's taken me all week to do it, but um, I'm still on the trail of Edith and Mariposa. Those pages that you've just seen me go through with the um, patchwork set, those pages will be appearing in Mariposa. I wanted to try them out first because I was sick of looking like a ninny. <laughs> Not being able to work out where blinking magnets went and the like. So I thought it was time that I tried them out first. And if I was going to try them out, I might as well try them out for a little journal, a little album. So uh, that's how that came about. Right, let's have a look at today's efforts. That's the one we've just done. This is the one I did this morning. Let's just um, shuffle stuff around. Um, that looks like it wants to go that way to me. I don't know why. Move those out way. So there you go. Same stuff, really. Uh, the stamps on this one are much, much better than on here, but that doesn't matter. Um, I like this light area there, which is still wet. Um, I like that light area there. So that's kind of how I did it. Um, I really hope if you try it that you have extreme fun. 
because <laughs> that's what this project is. It really is good fun. And like I say, you, you just can't go wrong. It's impossible. Um, but if you at any stage think that is beyond repair, just bin it. Start again. Because it's not going to cost you a fortune. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed my ramblings. I really hope you give this a shot. It's it's good fun. And I think that... Um, well, you, yeah, if you want to make a boho journal, I mean, come on. <laughs> this is boho. This is boho right here. Um, and that's it. I have no more to tell you, no more to share with you, I don't think. Um, but I'll see you tomorrow when we'll be doing something else. I'm not sure yet what that might be. <laughs> it might be more of this, but in different colours. Who knows? <laughs> it could be anything. So thanks for joining me. I've really appreciated your company. Um, thank you, Shaz. Thank, uh, somebody just gone off the top of mist. Thank you, Janya. Thanks, Mike. It is a fun project. It's messy, though. Beware. It is messy. So take precautions. Um, <laughs> lovely. Thank you all very, very, very much. And have a good day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Behave yourselves. Bye-bye. Yeah. Stay sober, Jim. <laughs> Don't stay sober. It's your birthday. I know. <laughs> 70, 70 times around the sun. Some achievement. It is some achievement. Bye. Bye. Take care. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye.